Hi everyone, welcome to this course on OCI Foundations. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this particular module, we are going to look into OCI Identity and Access Management Service. Specifically, we are going to look into what the service is. Sometimes the service is uh, sometimes the service is also referred to as IAM service. Uh, we are going to look into authentication and authorization and how those are done in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And finally, we are briefly uh, going to uh, look into uh, policies and what those policies are. Well, I'm sure you would have seen this particular uh, diagram in some other modules. Uh, in at a very high level, OCI Identity and Access Management Service deals with a couple of things. The first one is identity. Uh, who is requesting uh, access and then the second one is uh, permissions what kind of uh, per what kind of actions uh, does the authentic authenticated uh, principal want to perform and uh, let's talk about this in the next few slides uh, we'll talk about each of the individual uh, pieces in here well the first thing you need to un uh, understand is who is a principal think about principal as an entity that is allowed to interact with OCI resources. Now, there are two kinds of principles which are possible in OCI and in general, any kind of uh, system you're designing. Uh, the first one are the actual people. Uh, so let's call them users. Uh, and then the second one uh, is something called instance uh, principles. We'll talk about what those are. So just hang on for a minute. First, let's talk about IAM users uh, and groups. Well, we talked about users are individual people. Uh, these can be applications also, uh, but typically, you know, let's let's just uh, keep them to uh, individual people. So, like a storage admin wants to use your uh, resources in OCI, so so that is a user. You have a network admin, it's a user, and so on and so forth. You can have other users as as well. The first user, uh, in case of OCI, is always the default administrator, and the default uh, admin sets up other IAM users and groups, which seems very straightforward. Now in OCI, users enforce security principle of least privilege. What that means is a couple of things. Users have to belong to groups and then groups need to have this thing called a policy, which has some kind of a permission to either a whole account. So this be become a uh, tenancy means your account or a compartment uh, within that account. If these two conditions are not met, users have no access. Meaning, if you create a user and you don't put this user in a group and don't write a policy for this group, this user cannot use any of the OCI resources, has no access to any of the OCI resources. And we'll talk about this in, in more details in the next few slides. There is also this concept of instance principle. And in this case, think about uh, a normal principle being a user. You are making an instance a principle. That's that's a good way to think about it. Instance principle lets instances and applications, of course, running on top of those instances to make API calls against other OCI services, removing the need to configure user credentials or a configuration file. In typical situations, what you would do is you would keep this user credential and a config file running on top of your instance. And let's say the instance wants to talk to an object storage bucket here. Uh, you, it would use that config file to authenticate this particular instance against the object storage. Now, this is a clunky way to do security because of lots of issues. So uh, things like you are rotating your keys, etc. So the, the, the better way to do is, is designate this particular instance as a principle, as an instance principle. In that way, this instance can make calls to, uh, to object storage without needing any of this credentials or configuration files. So it's a much cleaner, uh, much better solution. Well, uh, we talked about compartment in the OCI architecture uh, module. Let me just quickly uh, uh, revisit it. A compartment is nothing but a collection of related resources. So you have your network resources, you put them in a compartment called network. You have some storage resources, you could put them in a compartment called storage. And of course, you don't have to call network and storage. It's you could have any kind of compartments uh, by by either by your resource types 
you can have compartments by your uh, geographic location so you can have a north america you can have an emia uh, you can have compartments based on your projects you can have compartments based on your um, your uh, organizational hierarchy there are multiple ways you could create compartments and there is a whole best practices on what to do how to do uh, you know how to create these compartments etc and you can you can check out that uh, advanced course uh, what compartments basically help you do it helps you isolate and control access to your resources so the whole idea of doing compartments is to isolate your resources right so your networking resources go here your storage resources go here right so you could put all of them in one like a kitchen sink um, everything in one place but that's not a good design uh, principle it's not a good way to isolate your resources now uh, each resource belongs to a single compartment so resources don't belong one resource cannot be part of multiple compartments resources can interact with other resources in different compartments so this uh, block storage uh, the, there's the compute instance this uh, it, it, there's a compute instance here it can use this virtual cloud network it doesn't have to be in the same compartment it can live in some other compartment you can give group of users access to compartments by writing policies and this is what we are going to talk a little lot more in detail in the subsequent slides but i want to um, to give you an idea that once you create a compartment you put your resources in there uh, even if you have users you have groups if you don't write a policy basically those users in those groups cannot access the resources uh, and like we talked about you know root compartment your tenancy uh, also called as root compartment can hold all cloud resources best practices to create dedicated compartments like you have here uh, and why again the idea being you want to isolate your resources well so let's look at the picture we just uh, saw in the beginning of this module uh, you have your account uh, we have two compartments network and, and storage network resources are in network compartment storage resources are in storage compartment now you have a set of users uh, let's say these users are network admins so you create a group called a network admin group so that's your step number one you put these users add these users as part of this uh, this part of this group of course you will first create the users then add then create this group add the users to the group and then the second step is you write a policy for this particular compartment let's say you want if you want these guys to to access these resources and then they will be able to access these resources and the same thing goes for let's say you have a separate set of people uh, let them let's say they are storage admins uh, and a different compartment and you could give them access like that right and it of course this is a very simplified um, um, diagram uh, and picture but in reality it will be more complex and you will have um, heterogeneous kind of resources and different kind of policies where you attach the policies etc etc so let's uh, quickly talk about the two of the most common um, uh, 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 common things you have to encounter when you design any kind of identity solution and that is authentication and authorization so this absolutely is a must and how how does every system handles in a different way let's talk about how oci does it uh, oracle cloud infrastructure does it so authentication basically uh, deals with user identity very simple uh, simply so it says basically uh, it is about who is this person who is trying to come to your system authenticate herself to the system is this who she says she is uh, that's literally what you are trying to do with authentication um, in in case of uh, oci authentication is done uh, in three different ways the first one is very simple username password this is common you do this many times a day accessing many systems you have usernames your passwords you authenticate yourself saying i'm the principal this is my my identity let me in right and the system lets you in or not let you in the second one is api signing keys this is used when you use the oci api in conjunction with the sdk and cli because think about your um, you're using sdk or cli they need to authenticate your applications need to authenticate themselves against the services saying this is a, you know this is an uh, authenticated principle let me in otherwise uh, it's a security issue right so when you do that there's something called an api signing key and uh, there you know there's this whole documentation is there on the on the site uh, on the doc site but uh, basic idea being you provide the public key uh, and then you hold the private key with yourself and when you uh, make the request you sign the request with your private keys right this is the public private key uh, encryption which is again very common model in public cloud space and then the third one is called auth tokens 
So this think about this as another model um, where um, the, the third parties, um, any kind of third party APIs that do not support this particular approach uh, can use something called an auth token. The very obvious one here uh, is um, uh, ADW Autonomous Data Warehouse, which uses auth token uh, to authenticate uh, against uh, OCI services. All right, so let's talk about authorization. Authorization basically specifies various actions an authenticated principal can perform. So once you authenticate somebody, what is she supposed to do in the system, right? What actions can she perform in the system? That is basically authorization. Authorization in OCI is done by writing these things called policies. We talked about them earlier. Uh, policies are written in human readable format. So you say allow group, you never say deny group. So everything is denied by default. That is the security principle of least privilege. Everything denied, zero trust model. Uh, so you say allow group, so you're allowing somebody like a group of user, uh, your group name to do something, there's a verb here, on some resources, either in your tenancies or in your compartment, specific compartments. And you can also make these conditional, right? But the idea is that these are very human readable like SQL statements, right? Now, important thing to keep in mind, policies attachment can be attached to a compartment or can be attached to an account. The simplest way is you just attach to the account. Where you attach it controls who can modify or who can delete it. And we talked about not in this module, but earlier that compartments are can be nested. So they can be six levels deep. So then it becomes complex where you attach your policy, who has access to that particular uh, level of your sub compartment and so on and so forth, right? Simplest, attach it to the tenancy, but keep in mind where you attach, control who modify, who can modify it or who can delete it. All right, so let's look at a little bit more detail into the policy. And again, these things are just, I'm um, going a little deeper, uh, foundational course, you absolutely don't need to write policies or anything, but just, uh, just it's good to know a little bit more on what these policies look like. So uh, we said earlier, you, you know, allow group, there's, there's a group here, uh, and there are some special conditions where there's also something called any dash user, where you can specify that, but that's a very boundary case. So most of the times it's allow group, group name, to do something. Uh, on some resources in, in location, location can be your tenancy or compartment, and you can do a conditional statement, right? So you can write a condition where make it more complex. So what the two most important things here, right? What kind of verbs are there? Verbs are nothing but your actions. What can I do on, in my account, right? So there are four kinds of actions you can perform. You can inspect resources. You can read resources. Sorry, just go back. You can inspect resources. You can read resources. Uh, you can use resources or you can manage resources. Manage gives you all permissions. These permissions are cumulative. So as you come down, read includes inspect plus. Use has read plus. So everything here, everything here, and then it comes here, right? And so the main thing to keep in mind is uh, most of the times you would be using use or manage. The difference is manage gives you all the permissions. Use gives you read. An update but you cannot create or delete and this is true for most of the resources but then specific actions vary by specific resources so you should always check out the documentation uh, to write if you're writing a policy to see what kind of policies you're writing and you know what 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 they what they will do now resource type so this is kind of the verb the actions right I can create something I can delete something I can I can uh, update something right what are the resource types well, resource types are the resources in 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 in, in the cloud and in, in OCI, right? So you have you, if you want to deal with just everything, just say all resources, meaning everything you create. Everything you create in OCI is a resource. Or you could say, you know, I want to limit somebody only to database, or I want to limit something to just instance, and so on and so forth. So you could do all resources, meaning everything. These are aggregate resource types. So or you could do database family, instance family, object family, etc. Or you could actually go very granular to individual resource types. So if for instances, you could just say instances, for example, right? Or you could say images uh, or volume attachment and so on and so forth. And again, the list is very exhaustive. So I'm showing here some dotted uh, lines, uh, meaning, you know, you should go on the documentation, check it out. Uh, idea being, you can control what kind of actions an authenticated principle can perform. And then you can also control the 
the actions can be performed on which resources is it at the aggregate level the the all up all resources or it is, is it just databases or is it just compute or even below that is it something below compute just on like instances or images or so on and so forth right so so it gives you very granular uh, controls now let's uh, let's make it real uh, by using an example we have seen earlier in the compute module so you have a compute instance running uh, this is running in compartment uh, sorry the, the compute instance is running in compartment abc your your block volume is also running in compartment abc the the virtual cloud network can be running in tenancy or it can be running in like some other compartment right which is perfectly fine we talked about resources in one compartment can talk to resources in other compartments you don't all need to belong to the same compartment um, right we talked about that so this is your setup so for this setup to work uh, what kind of basic identity uh, policies you will have to write uh, for let's say a group of users who want to create this instance uh, to uh, to to work right so the first thing you will have to do there's sort of two kinds of uh, two different groups of users here the first group of users are network admins you don't want people in the in your environment uh, to uh, to manage and create a virtual network sites right? because a security issue so these guys actually manage a cloud network so they create delete update uh, everything right so you write a policy like this network admins allow group network admins to manage virtual network family meaning everything they can do vcns they can do subnets they can do route table security list etc in tenancy so these guys have access to the whole account you could have said that networks belong to a particular compartment and written a policy just for that compartment but these guys have a policy which actually um, uh, is, is at the tenancy level right so they, they have access to the whole uh, tenancy and then um, you have another set of people these are your second set of people uh, and so that's why you see this group is different it's called instance launcher so these people are just launching instances and so what kind of policies would you write for them uh, to be able to launch instance of course you're launching an instance so you will uh, you will give them the full manage capabilities for the instance so you say manage which gives you all permissions instance family meaning everything with instances right so you are giving this uh, this access and then you are saying in compartment abc so these guys have access only to this particular compartment if there is another compartment here and if you don't write a policy these guys will have no access to that compartment right so first things you do that right you give them manage all permissions instance family meaning everything in instances and then what are these two additional uh, policies here right well let me talk about this one first instances depend on the virtual cloud network right we talked about about this there's a there's a physical NIC, there's a virtual NIC, and this is where you put your ip addresses you put your security list your uh, you put your network security group well security list actually goes on the subnet but you put network security groups etc so instances cannot be launched outside the network right because they need to communicate etc to other other instances to the internet so they launch within a virtual cloud network and they launch specifically within a subnet so for these guys for this policy to work if you just write this policy you don't have these policies you cannot launch an instance big why because it needs to use the virtual network family but in this case you don't need to create a virtual network family right so you're just saying use because i can just read or i might update something but i can just read it right so i don't need to do uh, i don't need to uh, manage uh, uh, action there verb there similarly these disks are already created somebody created these disks so that's why you are saying use these use volume family because i want i can read uh, read these uh, boot disk and block disks and block volumes if you didn't want to do that you wanted to create from scratch you would have just changed the use to say manage meaning they can they can create uh, update delete etc right so this is a common example very common example of how you would write policies just remember if you don't have these policies written uh, even if you create users uh, put them in groups uh, they cannot actually use uh, any of the resources well uh, that's it folks uh, this was a short module on uh, we just uh, we we quickly talked about identity access management service the two main things it deals with identities principles um, and and permissions policies uh, identities meaning people saying who they are uh, and then you authenticate them uh, using the various authentication mechanisms we saw um, permissions basically means authorization once somebody is authenticated what kind of specific actions they, they can perform and the authorization is done through policies we looked at the very basic syntax of policies 
and we looked at the common example where you would be using policies um, of how you would be using uh, policies. Uh, well, I hope you found this information useful. Thank you for your time.